Back in Springfield, second quarter of action about to get started as Jordan Nelson inbounds to Austin Curry. Railers the basketball and a 14-7 advantage over Southeast. Christian Van Hook, Nelson, Cohen, Gesner, and Kirby on the floor for the Railers. Nathaniel Smith on the bench with two early fouls. Austin Kirby left corner three, up and good. Jeff, the Railers shoot five of seven in the third quarter, including three of four from three-point land. Great way to start. Kirby, not a lot of balance. Kirby and Nelson with all the Railer points so far tonight. Jordan Nelson leading the way with 12. Austin now with five. You think they had Chandler out there. The Railers just packed it in the middle of on that first uh, sequence here of the uh, Southeast possession. Senor over to Fleming. Well, Senor. before they were running a 2-1-2, and now yeah. they're running a 1-3-1 with a runner on the baseline. So yeah. it gives a little more movement for Southeast. Sure Senor does. quickly over to Fleming. Right side three is up. Shoots it long. Davis there for the board. Puts it off the glass and in. You're right, Josh, and it also frees that wing when they swing it back around. Yeah, two missed opportunities, uh, one in the end of the quarter for Southeast, and they got that one, but Jordan's got a rebound backside. Yep. 17-9. Kirby handles over on the right wing to Gesner, watched by Senor. Gesner. Now they've got... Uh, uh, Rod Smith on Nelson. Smith, Smith strong as a horse. And going to go to the screen in the second again. time. And Christian did it. He jumped. You got to stand there and wait. If the, if the cutter doesn't come by it, then he misses the screen. But Christian did it twice, right out in front of everybody. The Coach Al says he's is making a motion saying he's being hooked. 6.36 to go in the first half. Railers with an eight-point advantage. 17-9. Davis in the lane. Lost it over to the right-hand side. Jumper by Southeast. Rolls down to a good Smith there for the putback. And I think he's going to the line shooting two. I think they're going to get Brant on that foul. Another offensive rebound. All of a sudden now, Southeast is getting everything off the offensive board. Yeah, now they're crashing and uh, and they're missing. You know, Southeast, when, when I was playing or even later earlier than that, uh, they were a throw and go, throw it up on the board and go get it. And now since they didn't have near the size, um, it, it seems like they're kind of trying to do that right now since their shots aren't, aren't, aren't hitting. Well, hopefully this game doesn't turn into the uh, Kansas State-Oklahoma State game I watched earlier today. With two minutes to go in the game, they'd already called 58 fouls in the contest. Hey, look who's coming in to get some minutes. <laughs> Second free throw, left it short. Rebound comes down to Austin Kirby. The, the level of physical play is going to go up for the Railers here in a moment. Jordan Nelson after the miss. Nelson gets it back from Kirby. Nelson around the right side. Fires up, it's long play to Christian, and he got it to go down. I thought <laughs> Jordan was taking a shot there. <laughs> right. It looks like it. 19 it was nice. It was very well disguised. Back up to a 10-point advantage. Anderson goes, but it's blocked by Van Hook. And then, and then a foul is going to be whistled on Jacoby Anderson. And now that'll be his second. So a good play, and we see it all the time. The player gets a shot blocked. He wants to make up for it. He goes in with the reach. And so now Jacoby Anderson has picked up his second foul. So a couple Spartans in foul trouble. And Christian, that's the energy they need from him. Uh, either end, but they got to have him play with energy. Yeah, get, he needs a quick break and get back in there. you got to ride a guy that's... Uh, you know, gets a layup, gets a block, and, and um, you know, Coach already had Cruz coming in. Yeah. And the Railers doing this without Smith. And Andy Cruz will play physical. There is no question about that. 5.40 to go in the first half. Railers 19-9. Can Jordan extend it? Jordan Three, no good. Gesner and Cruz high for it. Tipped out to coin. Nice job by the guys under the boards. First offensive board for the Railers. Kirby out a coin. They swing it around to Gesner in the left corner. Jordan makes a move. Gesner brings it out near the timeline, lobs over to Nelson. 5.20 to go, Rollers up by 10. Nelson on top to Coyne. Southeast changing their defenders. Kirby, another three is up and good. That would help if Austin could score about 20. <laughs> Taylor yeah. up 22-9. <laughs> Bounce over to Senor. Amazing what uh, better shooting does for you. Down cross court, Fleming. Swinging around on top to Gardner. Gardner's going to drive in the lane. And Andy involved. He's on the floor, I hope. Andy's going to be whistled for his first foul. And that will send Southeast to the line. Shooting a bonus. Which, so far, Southeast is 0 for 4 from the line. But again, something that was talked about last night. You get the right people at the line, and that free throw percentage doesn't make a difference. Yeah. 
Gardner's free throw up. That one is good. And Times is a good shooter. We know that. 78% from the line this season. 29 of 37 for Times Gardner. So uh, one of the few that uh, you don't want to send to the line for, uh, for, the, for the Spartans. Spartans real small out there now. Second one off the back of the room. No good coin. High for the rebound. And ripped it away. Brant played with a little energy. Double team in the backcourt. The Spartans really extended this pressure. Now it's a zone press, it looks like. Nelson lobs down to Gesner. Rollers have numbers. Now to get it back out to Coyne, and they'll reset. Kirby back out to Coyne, who hands to Nelson. Four and a half to go. Jordan lobs it over to Gesner. Gesner's going to drive and kick it back out to a wide open Jordan Nelson from the left side, and it is good. Wow. Rollers lighting it up tonight. 15 for Nelly, and that's the lead for the Railers. 25-10, 4-20 to go in the first half. Nice pass in and a lot of unselfishness out there. Guys are finding wide open shooters. Yep. <laughs> Gardner looks to make the move, and Andy's going to be whistled for the block a little late there. Andy, Andy came out of play defense on Jacoby Anderson, and he hit him so hard that he moved at least five feet. And Anderson is a tank. Andy just caved him in from behind. <laughs> Andy gets his money's worth when he's out there. Gardner will be back to the line. Free throw up. That one good. And that's what you need from Andy. I mean, he, he, that's a, an element the Oilers don't have. They didn't have a tough guy, and uh, he's our tough yeah. guy. If he can do a good job of boxing out and getting a couple of rebounds, uh, that's exactly what the Raiders need, a little physicality out there. And <laughs> Cruz definitely brings that, the big number 32. <laughs> Second one good as well. 25-12 as we approach the halfway mark of the second quarter. Nelson lobs it over to Gesner. Long skip pass across. Rollers working around the perimeter. Back out now to Nelson. Jordan looks to make a move. Drives by everybody. Goes in with the left. That's no good. Andy tries to get it. Does a nice job of taking away. Pulls up, takes the jumper. Doesn't go down. Nice offensive board by Andy Crew. Gardner works against Coyne. Back on top and Kirby knocks it out of bounds. <laughs> More Raiders on the floor tonight than there have been in the last month. That's what winning does. And, you know, and, and confidence is building now. You can see it, the, the play of the Raiders is, is totally different than what we've seen in the last five games. Yep, they're playing. Once they start shooting well, they play line energy on both ends. 3.40 to go in our first half. Lincoln back, ball, back to 25-12. Man. Anderson. Over to the other Anderson. Drives by Cruz. Dumps it down low for Jacoby. That's no good. Tipped out. Nope. Yes, or Nelson saves it from going out of bounds. Man, the Rose are playing physical. They're not calling it. You play it that way. Gesner <laughs> works into the front court. They'll back the dribble near the timeline. Well, we managed to play this whole quarter without Smith. Coin working against Fleming. Nelson Got along it. three. Oh. Off the backboard. High for the board. Get Coming out will be Gardner. Take a charge. Three on one. And Andy's going to be whistled for the foul. They're going to count the basket. <laughs> Andy was just slightly late to level him. <laughs> As it was, he gives up a bucket and a foul. And Smitty will be back. Uh, give Andy a hand. He gave us some good minutes. Jagger Anderson's first points of the night make it a 25-14 game. And Brent Coyne's come back with a lot more energy since uh, they pulled that up and put him back in there. Free throw up and good. Now back to a 10-point lead for the Railers at 25-15. Three minutes to go. The inbound pass is tipped away, but Kirby does a nice job of saving it over to Nathaniel. Jeez. And now foul is going to be whistled on Jagger Anderson. Railers caught a break there because Nathaniel got up in the air and didn't really have anywhere to take it. <laughs> Austin Kirby went face first into the bench and... Uh, he gets up and Coach Allen's lighting him up and he's looking at him like, man, I just dole on my face. Well, we've seen the pressure now uh, being brought to full court by the Spartans and um, <clears throat> got to move it up and the Raiders got to pay attention and get the press breaker um, set. You know, it looked yeah. like the first couple of times we were uh, shocked that they were going to do it, but they're down. They're going to do anything they can to, uh, to get back into this. And one thing I've read this year all about Southeast is they put a spurt together against any team. We saw it uh, in Collinsville when they were down, I think, 14 at half and ended up yep. winning by like 20. Last night they put a 14-0 spurt on Rochester to blow that game open. So uh, you got to look out for it, and hopefully we can minimize it. After the foul, Nathaniel Smith uh, stepped to the line and hit both free throws. And a quick shot by Jacoby Anderson results in a rebound for Jordan Nelson and the Railers with 2.40 to go in the first half. Up by 12 with the basketball. And again, Smitty with a big size advantage on Times Gardner. 
Lob it over the top of the key. Nathaniel thought about taking it. He's going to step in. A little 12-foot leader is good. Nice body control by Nathaniel not picking up what could have been a charge. Great shot selection, too. Uh, yeah, Nathaniel turned down a three and got a better look in the lane. 29-15. 2.15 to go in the first half. Jagger Anderson into Jacoby. Gardner makes a move, little leaner, that's no good. Kirby the rebound for the Rollers. So it's now doing a great job on the defensive board. A boy are limiting Southeast opportunities to run, particularly when you shoot as good a percentage as the Rollers are shooting. Nelson sees a double team come to him. Gesner will work out of that, lost the dribble. Still picked up, ball loose on the floor. Knocked out of bounds. Terry, and it was ah. tipped out of bounds by Kirby. Looked like, like Gesner got tackled. Yeah, that's one thing the Rollers can't do is run away from our from our the uh, ball handlers. You know, look like it. Uh, Gessner was out there all on an island by himself with a with a tenacious Southeast defender. Yeah. 140 to go. First half. Lincoln 29. Springfield Southeast 15. Anderson down low to Davis. Lost it, but Jacoby Anderson is there for the putback. That's no good. Davis tries again. That won't go down, and a foul is going to be whistled as Gesner and Anderson hit the deck, and I think the foul will go against Gesner. That'll be the second on him, and it'll send Southeast back to the line, shooting two. Well, John going on out there between the players. Those don't need to get caught up in that. Yeah, it wouldn't be a Lincoln Southeast game without <laughs> it, though. Yeah, but they haven't any Lincoln fans thrown out yet. <laughs> Yeah. by Davis. Again, we got a rebound here. Uh, 9 of 23 from the line. He's already missed three tonight. Uh, so that puts him at 9 of 26. So uh, we really got a rebound here and box out. Make sure we grab the shooter, too. Well, that makes him a liability in a close game. Ah, missed it. And then Austin's going to be whistled for reaching in as Gardner snuck in behind and got the rebound. Austin picking up his first foul. Got to get a body on somebody in there. That was a bad rebound. Yeah, Smitty just got pushed underneath. He got too far underneath the rim and He's got to get down lower and push him back out. He's worried, I would imagine, at least a little bit about picking up a foul on a, on a free throw rebound. Gardner, his only points tonight have come from the line where he is 4 of 5. 29 16, 128 to go in the first half. Gardner's second one, up and good as well. 29 17, here comes the pressure again. Kirby does a nice job coming back to meet the pass. Here comes Nathaniel. Nathaniel to Nelson. Nice job by the Rollers breaking the pressure. It was. And now they're bringing it hot and heavy. They get it over to Nelson along three. That was good. A KF day. We'll hurt that class if, uh, yeah. if Nelson keeps shooting. But he, Nelson, the senior, took a deep breath, saw where the opening was, and broke it the right way. Three on the way. That's no oh, good. Yeah, yeah. foul is going to be whistled on. Good call. Good call. Foul is going to be whistled on the Jacoby Anderson. Anderson. Yep. He and if that is on Anderson. That will be his third. That just caved down right over that time. Yeah, nice. Kirby, Kirby did a good job. He's down on his, where he's supposed to be as a wing on the rebound inside. And uh, the only way Kobe, Jacoby was going to get that board is, was to push uh, Austin out. And he, and he did that and uh, picked up his third foul. You know, up 15 with a minute to go. Do you take Nathaniel out here so he doesn't pick up a silly No doubt. No doubt. I, I think you do it. Uh, you're, you got a good lead here. you got to get him out and, um, and you know, just preserve That's so he doesn't pick up that, uh, that last foul. Max Cook will be coming in. Austin Kirby steps to the line and hits the first free throw for Smith. Max Cook will check in, replacing Nathaniel. And, you know, the thing you've got to... Uh, the thing you've got to understand is that uh, at Southeast or uh, at Collinsville, just like I said, they came from 14 down at halftime, and they were ahead by the other third quarter. Right. So this game, this game's a long, long way from over. Here we miss the second one. So the Railers are up 33-17, under a minute to go. Smith back on top, kick it back out. Gardner a long three. It's up and rattles good. This first basket of the night. It's 33-20. Got to end the first half on a good note. And the inbound pass is tipped away by Davis. And not taking anything away from Max, but this is a lot of pressure to put on a freshman. Well, maybe right now. Yeah, good job. I thought I, just what I thought was putting Nathaniel right back in. Yep. Let him keep, let him trigger it. And then uh, Max keep his uh, warm up off because he'll go right back in if, uh, yeah. if the situation warrants. 40 seconds to go. 33-20. Smith into Kirby. Double team comes. Gets it now to Chris. Over to Nelson. Now the Railers have number. Jordan thought about it. Nice, nice pass. Nice bounce pass to Brandt with a yeah. little play up. It's good. Great press break. Railers have done a pretty good job against this Southeast pressure. 
Only two turnovers this quarter against that heavy pressure. 35-20, Southeast probably to look for the last shot. Gardner, working around. Senor, down to 13 seconds. He's gonna drive in the lane. Davis, little uh, jumper outside the lane is up and good, so the Railers have a chance. 35-22, down to five. Oh, charge four. Nathaniel pulls up, fires off. Down the he got it! Yeah! Great win in the corner, in the half. The Railers with probably their best half of the season. Nathaniel Smith drains a three as time expires to end the first half. Our score as we head to the half. It is Lincoln, 38. Southeast, 22. And we'll be back with our halftime in just a moment. Back in two minutes, you're listening to Lincoln Railroad Basketball.